How's it going everybody? I am the Texas Man. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. Please give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Also do me the biggest favor of all. Hit the bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on my channel in the future. And of course we are going to continue on with reading the Island 2, The Creature. This is part 4. Make sure you guys check out part 1, part 2, and part 3 before continuing on here with me in this book read through. Hope you guys all enjoy. Let's get into it. Chapter 4. Survivors and Vampires <clears throat> As the team continued to walk towards the rising smoke, they marveled at the area. The first island had areas of random weather, such as the tropical beach, the volcano, and polar mountain. The second island was nothing more than one gigantic forest with oak and pine trees everywhere. There was also more trees than on the first island. Mosquitoes were flying around and were at times attempting to suck the life out of Sawyer's hands. Everyone be silent, said Jack, lowering his body to the ground completely. The group lowered their bodies, hid in bulky bushes, and looked around the area to realize every creature that would make noise was being silent as well. What is out there? asked Sawyer. I'm not sure, but I think I saw some sort of dark cloud moving about, replied Jack. Look, said Bobby, pointing towards a dark cloud floating above the ground. I'm going in for a closer look. Look, said Sawyer. Sawyer crawled towards the stranger and eventually stood up. Hello there. My name is Sawyer Miller, said the man to the dark cloud with white bolts of electricity running through it. Hello, I am the creature, said the dark cloud. The group was shocked that the thing was talking without a face or even a mouth. Are you friendly? asked Sawyer. Start running and find out, said the creature. Sawyer looked at the creature for a few moments in its still position and watched as it dashed towards him. The creature rushed through Sawyer and suddenly Sawyer's body had vanished from the rest of the group's sight. No! yelled Chris, opening fire on the creature. The rest of the team stood up and opened fire on the murder creature with their machine guns. After 30 seconds of continuous gunfire, the group realized the bullets just passed through the creature's body and that running was the only option. Run, ordered Jack. The group dashed towards the trees and continued to head for the plane crash. After five minutes of running nonstop, the group stopped and realized the creature was either lost or did not pursue them at all. What was that back there? asked Chris, crying, afraid, and very mad. The creature, replied Nick. I know what that thing said it is, but what would I, but what I want, but what I would like to know is how a gold egg could make something that deadly in which bullets can't even touch its surface, said Chris. I'm not sure, answered Kate, hugging Chris to comfort him in this time of horror to see his father disappear in front of his own eyes. I wonder what other odd creatures Flint placed on this island. At least the first island had creatures and dinosaurs we all had heard about, but this island has sent a yeti and some deadly smoke cloud called the creature to us. What other horrors are we going to encounter before we leave, said Chris, going through the motions of his father's death. I have no idea, Chris. However, you can be sure that we will find a way to annihilate that monster, in or and in order to do so, we need to locate the plane crash, said Jack, loading a fresh clip of bullets into his gun. Chris put his emotions behind him, locked and loaded his machine gun, and headed towards the plane crash with Bobby and Nick alongside him. How do you plan to kill that thing, asked Kate. Easy, we let it drown when the island sinks, replied Jack. Jack and Kate rejoined the rest of the group, and 30 minutes later they arrived at the plane crash to see a number on one of the wings stating it was flight 2020 that crashed. Dead bodies were laying everywhere, fires were still burning in and out of the plane, and wreckage was everywhere. The plane was upside down, and the front of it took the most devastating impact into the hard, dirt ground. The five people looked around the plane, hoping to survive survivors and that not all the passengers and crew were in heaven. After searching inside and out of the plane for ten minutes, they did not find anyone, 
until they tried to leave the area. Standing in front of them were four people aiming machine guns at the group, and Jack's group, Jack's group aimed theirs as well. Hello there, said Jack, hoping that the meeting would not become a firefight. Hello to you, said one of the men. My name is Jack Woodson, and standing here with me is my wife Kate, twin brothers Bobby and Nick Hayes, and our younger member Chris Miller, said Jack. Hello to... Hello to you all. I am Smith Blockdown and a boxer. This is Tiffany Roberts, Mark Jones, and Luke Samuel. We are survivors of Flight 2020, said Smith. We are the survivors of Flight 193, said Jack. The missing one night flight, uh, the missing Flight 193 back in 1996, asked Tiffany. That is us, and there are many more of us eight years ago, said Jack. What happened, asked Tiffany. Why don't we lower our weapons and I'll tell you, said Jack. Smith looked at his team and signaled them to lower their machine guns, and Jack did the same with his team. They were killed by titanic creatures and dinosaurs that were supposed to be extinct, said Jack. Where did you get those machine guns, asked Smith. Found them on the first island, replied Jack. Where did you find your machine guns since you have been on a second island for only a day, asked Nick. In the wreckage of the plane. We believe someone was on a CIA mission that was going to use them, said Smith. Moments later, everyone ran around introducing themselves to one another. Tiffany Roberts was 18 years old, with blonde hair and blue eyes, and was being watched by Chris more than usual. Mark Jones introduced himself as a 45-year-old man and an author of horror, horror stories, and was bald. Luke Samuel was the pilot of Flight 2020 and was 36 years old with his next birthday in two weeks. And finally, the leader of Flight 2020 survivors, Smith Lockdown. Smith was a 28-year-old boxer and began to realize only one person would lead the group if they were to combine groups to leave the island together. We are headed for a submarine that we believe is operational to leave this cursed area at last. Would you be interested in joining my team, said Jack, knowing that Smith would not like his rule being challenged? I will join your team, said Tiffany, seeing Chris watching her closely. I will as well, said Mark, and seconds later, Luke also. I will not allow you to take my people away from me, said Smith. I'm not taking them from you. They are leaving you willingly, said Jack. What gives you the right to be leader over them when I am a leader on this island also? said Smith. I have battled two titanic spiders, a yeti, flesh-eating polar bears, three t-rexes, three spinosauruses, an octopus, about ten pterodactyls, at least fifty raptors, terrorists, and a dark cloud that makes your body disappear. What have you encountered in the one day that you have been on this island? Well, I have been on this one island and another one combined for eight years. I should be the leader because I have the most experience in surviving the horrors of these two islands. Have on them, said Jack. I could care less about your statistics, Jack. So, I challenge you for leadership position of the group in a brawl fight to the death with no rules, said Smith. And should I refuse, you'll do what to me, replied Jack. I will sleep with your wife, Kate, and then shoot her, said Smith, obviously sick in the head and hating Jack very much. No limitations then, said Jack, placing his machine gun on the ground. I will not allow you to command my people, said Smith, placing his machine gun on the ground also. No limit, said Smith, then prepare to die, said Jack. Smith laughed and put up his fists. Jack put up his fists and rammed toward Smith. The two men dished it out, punch after punch after punch, for several minutes. Soon the two of them began to use their legs to kick and their teeth to release them from a pinned position. After two minutes of continuous war, Jack pinned Smith to the ground and prepared to punch Smith's throat, yet paused. Wait! yelled Smith. Jack halted his attack to end Smith's life, stood up, and spared Smith's life. Smith's life. It's a lot of this. Is. Jack looked at the others and walked away from Smith to spare his life, since he had proved his point that he was leader. 
Why do you not kill when your traditions say you should? asked Smith to Jack. Jack stopped in his walk and turned around to face Smith. I am not a monster, Smith, but a born leader, replied Jack. Jack turned around to face the others of the group and started to walk away. Smith stood up and dashed towards Jack with a fist ready to punch. Jack quickly turned around to see Smith about to continue to fight, made a fist, and punched Smith when in striking distance. Everyone, including Jack, froze to watch Smith lock down his body, fly backwards into a pine tree. Jack walked over to Smith's body to realize that he had struck the boxer with such a powerful blow that he punched Smith in the heart. I'm sorry, punched Smith in the chest and punched Smith's heart out of his backside and onto the ground. The group of now seven people admitted that Jack Woodson was the leader of the group of eight. Jack tossed Smith's machine gun in the flames of the burning plane and grabbed his own. Jack informed Tiffany, Mark, and Luke the situation about the islands going underwater very soon. Flint's treasure of gold creature eggs, the submarine built by Flint, and of course, the creature. As Jack told the three new members of the information, Chris realized he was falling in love with Tiffany. Let's gear up and head west to locate the submarine, said Jack. The group of eight left Flight 2020's crash site and the body of Smith locked down. Once the team left the area of the plane, the creature arrived out of water, I'm sorry, out of cover, ate the body of Smith, and noticed where the humans were headed. Time passed on rapidly as the group continued to walk through the forest for two hours, and soon they halted at the site of a structure. Standing before them was a house made of rusted metal with a main and upper level. Weeds had grown in every available space where the cement was broken apart. It was an odd structure located in the middle of nowhere and was weirder with, with it being slightly tilted to the north. The only thing that was normal about the house was that it had a doorbell of solid gold and a wooden door. The group walked onto the porch, which was made of noisy wood when stepped on, and Jack pressed in the doorbell's button. There was no answer, and it did not surprise any of the group that no one was home. Jack stepped back, kicked down the wooden door with his right foot, and began to walk inside of the house. Suddenly, Jack was pulled inside of the house by a figure with white teeth, white fangs, white skin, white fingers, dark red eyes, black hair, black shoes, black pants, a black shirt, and a black robe. How dare you disturb my family's home, the home of the Romans, said the odd figure, holding Jack's throat and lifting his body off of the floor. Put him down, said Kate. What if I don't, asked the odd creature. Kate aimed her machine gun at the odd man and pulled the trigger. Suddenly another figure, like the one that had Jack, entered the path of one of the bullets and wasn't killed. How dare you try to kill my husband and kill a vampire, you ugly woman, said the figure standing outside of the doorway. Vampires now? Did Pirate Flint have any brains when he put these eggs on the island that some things can't be killed by bullets, said Chris. The group realized that they had encountered another creature with bullets. I'm sorry, another creature that bullets would not kill. Vampires. Out of the house walked two more vampires and started walking towards the rest of the group to turn them into vampires as well to join the Roman family. You get to watch your friends join us, male human, as a vampire, and they will not remember anything in their past. Even your wife will not remember she loves you and might fall in love with that airplane pilot. Or maybe that bald guy, said the vampire, talking to Jack. Jack, because of love, filled up his strength and kicked the vampire in the head and sent him flying through the wall of the house and into a hard tree, which killed him. The other three vampires turned around to see Jack was very powerful and decided to make him a vampire first. The vampires charged towards Jack, opened their mouths to turn him into a vampire, and tripped on a banana people, pe people banana peel. Jack walked over to the fallen vampires and kicked each one of the creatures into the air and into a hard tree, killing the Roman vampire family. 
That was awesome, yelled Tiffany. I suggest we barricade the entire house and spend the night here for shelter from the rainstorm that's coming, said Jack. Bobby, Nick, Luke, and Mark placed large crates of odd stuff to block the hole Jack made, and within 20 minutes, the rainstorm began to downpour on the islands. Kate and Tiffany had their own sleeping quarters upstairs, while the men slept downstairs to allow the ladies privacy. As the night rolled onwards, Tiffany, Mark, and Luke all saw a cloud of dark smoke circling the house for at least ten minutes. Mark awoke Jack to inform Jack of the situation, yet luckily the creature did not attempt to enter the house or kill anyone, and soon left the area. Everyone went back to sleep, and hours later, Tiffany awoke. Tiffany walked slowly down the stair stairs to not awaken anyone, and walked past the kitchen where Kate made the team dinner. Tiffany looked at the men to realize Chris was not sleeping either and saw him standing outside of the roofed porch. Tiffany opened the door and saw Chris thinking about something very emotional. Hello, Tiffany, said Chris, not even looking at her to notice she was behind him. I take it you could not sleep either because of seeing what Pirate Flint's gold treasure has brought onto these islands, said Chris. I can't. Sorry. I can't not I can't sleep not because of those vampires we encountered but what killed my father hours before we met you said Chris what was your father's name and how did he die asked Tiffany Sawyer my father was devoured by the creature which is that monster you saw hours ago roaming around said Chris you must feel alone on this island said Tiffany no, no, not really. Jack has been like a stepfather to me and the rest of the team ever since we crashed eight years ago, said Chris. You still must miss him, though, said Tiffany. Yes, I just wish we could return from the... Sorry. I, yes, I wish... I just wish he could return from the deadly magic like Kate did for Jack, said Chris. Maybe he will, said Tiffany before walking up to Chris and kissing him on the cheeks. Tiffany walked back in the house to sleep, and minutes later, Chris did the same, knowing that someone truly loved him for who he was. And that's going to do it for me, guys. This will be the end of Part 4. Look forward to Part 5 coming out very soon. You guys have a great day.